Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and this is a step-by-step -step guide on how to examine a seven-week pregnancy on ultrasound. We will start with the indications for a seven-week ultrasound. These are the various reasons for performing the ultrasound. It is performed to confirm an intrauterine pregnancy and to estimate the gestational age based on the size of the embryo. By seven weeks, a heartbeat is usually present, so it is also performed for heartbeat detection. This scan can also be performed to check for multiple pregnancies and to assess the overall health and development of the pregnancy. And if the patient is having symptoms such as bleeding, pain, or unusual symptoms, that could indicate a potential problem with the pregnancy, an ultrasound can be performed. These are some important considerations regarding the scan and the procedure. Informed consent means that the patient has agreed to the procedure. After the procedure has been explained to the patient, Ensure patient comfort and privacy during the examination. Follow professional guidelines and institutional protocols for ultrasound scanning. And keep communicating with the patient during the exam. Explain to them what is being seen during the ultrasound. After the patient is ready for the procedure, the examination can start. We are only looking at a transabdominal approach. This is the patient positioning regarding a transabdominal ultrasound. The patient lies on her back on the ultrasound table in a supine position. The head and the upper body can be slightly elevated for more comfort for the patient. For a transabdominal scan, a partially full bladder can be sufficient as it pushes the intestines away and provides a clearer view of the uterus. However, it is not that important at this stage in early pregnancy. This is a diagram showing the pelvis. This is the umbilicus and at the bottom, this area is the symphysis pubis. This white box is the ultrasound probe. This red dot is the indicator or the orientation marker. To start the scan, choose a curvilinear probe with a frequency between 3 to 5 MHz. Apply a significant amount of gel to the lower abdomen. Choose the widest field of view setting. Adjust the depth and focus accordingly. Then place the probe in the midline just above the pubic bone the symphysis pubis with this probe marker pointing towards the patient's head. This is a longitudinal orientation. Slowly sweep the probe slightly upwards until the uterus is visualized. The gestational sac, if present, will be seen within the uterus. This is the gestational sac with an echoic fluid. It is a round and echoic area within the uterus. After locating the gestational sac, you can narrow the field of view and use the zoom to focus on the gestational sac. Next, you can measure the mean sac diameter. Place one set of calipers across the length of the gestational sac and Another set of calipers at the anterior and posterior aspects of the gestational sac to measure the height. You will get the length and the height in longitudinal view. For measuring the width, rotate the probe 90 degrees anti-clockwise to view the uterus and the gestational sac in a transverse plane. Place two calipers along the horizontal axis of the gestational sac 
to measure the width. The mean sac diameter or MSD is calculated by adding the length, width and height and dividing the result by 3. This is an example of mean sac diameter. The length is 20 millimeters, the width is 18 millimeters, and the height is 22 millimeters. We will add these three values up and divide the result by 3. So we will get 20 millimeters. The MSD here is 20 millimeters. At 7 weeks, you should be able to see the yolk sac, and the yolk sac can also be measured. Place the caliper at the inner edges of the yolk sac. Basically, these are the borders of the anechoic area, the dark area. Measure the largest diameter of the yolk sac. You can take multiple measurements just to make sure it is accurate. Next, we will focus on the embryo to measure the crown rump length, the CRL, which will give us the estimated gestational age. Adjust the probe to get a clear view of the embryo. Try to get a clear sagittal view of the entire length of the embryo. Then press the caliper function on the ultrasound machine. Place one caliper at the head of the embryo and the other caliper at the bottom end of the embryo. If it is difficult to differentiate between the head and the rump of the embryo, just place the calipers at the upper and lower edges of the embryo. The measurement should be taken in a straight line. In this example, the CRL is 9.4 millimeters, which corresponds to 7 weeks. Then you can measure the fetal heart rate. The heart rate is measured using the M mode function. First, locate the fetal heartbeat. It will appear as a flickering motion within the embryo. A continuous rhythmic movement will be seen inside the embryo. Try to obtain a clear image of the embryo and its heart. Try to place the heart at the center of the image by adjusting the probe and optimizing the image. By setting the depth, gain and focus as needed. Press the M mode button on the machine or on the touch screen if your machine has a touch screen or it may also be found under a mode menu in some machines. Press this M mode button to switch from B mode to M mode. After the button is pressed, a line will appear on the screen. This is the M mode line. Use the trackball, joystick or touch screen depending on the machine and place this M mode line over the flickering rhythmic movement inside the embryo. This line must pass through the small rhythmic movement that is the heart to give an M mode tracing. Move the cursor so that this M mode line bisects the fetal heart. Once this M mode line is placed, press the freeze button to freeze the image and the M mode tracing will appear either at the bottom or on the side of the screen showing the heart motion over time. This upper area represents the uterus, the uterine wall from this region. The uterine wall will appear as a barcode. Then as we go down, the embryo and the fetal heart will be in this region. This small region is the fetal heartbeat. 
it is very very small so the waves are not very clear in the M mode very small heartbeats will appear like this and as we go down below the heart this is the anechoic fluid in the gestational sac this anechoic area corresponds to this area in the image this whole region on the M mode tracing is the gestational sac and below the gestational sac is the uterine wall again this is the uterine wall from this part of the image some machines will automatically calculate the fetal heart rate based on the M mode tracing but if the machine does not include this automatic function then you can use the calipers by pressing the measure or the caliper button on your machine place one caliper at one point over here and the second caliper a short distance away from the first caliper in a more developed fetal heart the heartbeats will show distinct waves and you can place the calipers at two peaks or troughs of the waves to calculate the heart rate but in this type of heartbeat place the calipers at two similar looking points in the heartbeat region usually they are a short distance away from each other place the calipers in this manner and the machine will calculate the heart rate based on these measurements in this example the heart rate was 123 beats per minute after you have taken the measurement you can press the B mode or the 2D mode button to return to the standard imaging mode then you can use the print or save function to document the heart rate and M mode tracing for the patient's records after that you can rotate the probe 90 degrees anti-clockwise from the longitudinal position to scan the uterus in transverse plane scan the entire uterus from the fundus to the cervix check for any other pathologies or ectopic pregnancy examine the ovaries as well to rule out ectopic pregnancy or other pathologies for locating the right ovary slowly move the probe to the right of the uterus and angle superiorly and you will get this type of image this is the right ovary slowly rotate the probe clockwise to capture the ovary in a longitudinal plane use slight tilting rotating or angling movements to get the best view of the ovary now we have to measure the ovaries press the caliper button or the measure button on your machine for measuring the length is the calipers along the longest axis of the ovary this is the length the depth will be the anterior posterior measurement so place the calipers in this manner rotate the probe in a transverse orientation by directing the indicator to the patient's right side and get a good transverse image of the ovary for the width of the ovary measure the horizontal axis in transverse plane by placing the calipers in this manner repeat the same steps for the left ovary as well examine the entire left ovary for any ectopic pregnancy or other pathology the ultrasound scan is now complete and now you can write the report this is an example of a normal 
seven week intrauterine pregnancy. The report starts with the patient's name, date of birth, date of ultrasound, and indication for study. In this example, the indication was a routine early pregnancy ultrasound. Then you can write the findings. These are the findings in this example. Uterus, position, antiverted. 80% of the uterine positions are antiverted. Contour and texture. Uniform with no evidence of fibroids or abnormalities. Then you can write about the endometrium. Thickness and appearance. Homogeneous. Thickened consistent with early pregnancy. Then you can write the findings of the gestational sac. Location, centrally located within the endometrial cavity. The shape is regular, oval, as seen here. Size or measurements, mean sac diameter was 20 millimeters. The yolk sac is visible normal in size and appearance. After that, you can write the findings of the embryo. Crown drum length was 9.4 millimeters, correlating with a gestational age of approximately seven weeks, zero days. Cardiac activity present, regular rhythm. Heart rate measured at 123 beats per minute, within normal range for gestational age. Anatomy, no obvious abnormalities noted at this early stage. After that, you can write about the adnexa. Ovaries, normal in appearance with no adnexal masses or cysts noted. Then you can write the sizes of the right and left ovaries. Then you can write about free fluid pelvic cavity, no free fluid noted in this example. Finally, you can write the impression. This is an impression of a normal seven week pregnancy ultrasound report. This is a normal intrauterine pregnancy corresponding to a gestational age of approximately seven weeks, zero days. The embryo demonstrates normal growth for gestational age with appropriate cardiac activity. No abnormalities or complications noted at the time of the scan. Continue routine prenatal care. Recommend follow-up ultrasound as per standard obstetric guidelines or as clinically indicated. After a seven-week scan is done, the timing of the next scan can vary and depends on various factors, but usually after a seven-week pregnancy ultrasound, the next scan is the nuchal translucency scan, which is done between 11 and 14 weeks of gestation. It is an important part of the first trimester screening for chromosomal abnormalities such as Down syndrome and other conditions. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.